All right, so welcome to this episode of Kelly's Reality. Today, my special guest is arguably the most famous South African TV chef, Siba Mtengana, and you will know her from her show, Siba's Table, which is broadcast across every continent on the Food Network. And along with that, she's also the founder of the Siba Company, and she's an author and mother of four. So thank you so much for taking time to chat with me today. I really appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. And thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thank you. Yes, I always look at your Instagram and I'm always hungry at the time that I'm scrolling. And so I have to stop doing that because then I, yes, it's just giving me some food <laughs> craving. <laughs> oh, awesome. That's awesome. All right. So let's jump in and talk a little bit about COVID and lockdown and quarantine. It's been a very difficult time for everyone globally, uh, especially with mothers in particular. I know you have four young children. Uh, so what have you been doing to keep your and your family's mental health balanced during this tough time? It's been it's been really crazy and I've done a number of things, but I just want to set the scene. I am a mother of four kids. My oldest is eight. My youngest is, so the two years apart. So four, six, um, and then eight year old, and then obviously the two year old. And the three of them go to school. And because of COVID-19, it meant that I had to do homeschooling mm -hmm. for my kids. At least the three of them, eight showed me lots of planes. I have so much respect for teachers. Oh, yeah. Um, after the after um this this whole um saga of COVID-19. And you know, it, it was really hard, especially we when we were in lockdown level five and four, because it meant I didn't have access to you know the people and the community that that would ordinarily help me. You know, whether it's it's my business or the kids, I've got um, I've got you know an au pair that helps me um, with the children. Um, you know, I, I asked my nanny to come and stay with us for a period because I knew I would not cope alone. So that was the first thing I did. I asked for help. I said, mm -hmm. I said to my um, aunt that she must please come and stay with us because it just it was almost impossible for me to just be with the kids and my husband alone. And so she came to stay with us. And then second, what I did was. I I spoke with my husband and I told him I am not fine. There were instances where I would it it was like a a, a roller coaster of emotions because for a period I'd be fine and then there'll be another period where I would almost lose it and I'll think who oh, is this person because this is not actually who I am. I'm very temperament, um, you know, very I have it all together. But there was this monster like. <laughs> person who would erupt here and there and I'm like no I don't want to be this person so I spoke with my husband I said to him down I said you know what I'm taking too much um that I can chew and that I can bite on not that I choose to but because this is where we are with COVID-19 so can I just have rest days can I have days where I don't have to uh, homeschool the, the kids I don't have to um cook that day and I don't have to do you know anything like if I want to sleep I'll just want to sleep because I also realized that I wasn't uh, resting enough which was not a good thing um, as well so I did a lot of that and within that time I found time to read and um, found some time for you know spiritually I'm, I'm you know I'm, I'm Christian mm -hmm. I really believe and I'm very invested in my faith mm -hmm. and found time to spend time with God and I also found time to just do things that I like, even if it's just little things, doing my nails, doing my hair, you know, mm -hmm. just things that just speak to me personally. And also reaching out to my family, whether it would be, you know, I come from a very big family, my mm -hmm. sisters, my cousins, my my community and my people. And I enjoyed social media, I must be mm -hmm. honest. I really enjoyed, you know, sharing my stories and sharing, you know, the the the, hard, the hardships that I was going through with my with my with my village with my fan base and with the, you know my community and people really enjoyed that as well because it was real it was authentic I wasn't trying you know to say people must have it all together mm -hmm. because i wasn't having it all together myself and yeah that's how, that's what i did and, I, and exercising um in the house because we we're locked down we couldn't go anywhere 
Yes. Uh, really helped um, quite a bit. So, and also eating healthy, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, I made a decision that I'm going to, I'm not going to let myself go within this time. I'll, I'll snack, for instance, on, you know, on nuts and, you know, good healthy foods instead mm -hmm. of just letting myself go because that, that's, that's what it is. So it was small things um, that made a slight difference within that time, but mm, yeah. it was manic. It was hard. Yes, yes. Yeah, I have two little ones myself. So I totally, we were trying to homeschool a four-year-old. It was just not working. I, it's, it's a lot of work. And like you said, so much respect for teachers. And, and I love that you found things that helped you cope with it. Like you said, t just being honest with your husband, having talks with him, asking for help, eating better, exercising, all great things. Uh, that we can control because there's so much out there we don't have control of, but you can control what you're eating, how you're moving your body, your support system. So I love that. Uh, and so many people were, uh, especially during quarantine and even after, have a lot of friends, family members that will be struggling with anxiety, depression, uh, other types of mental illness. And something that comes up a lot too, especially is how can I help them? Uh, especially mm -hmm. from a distance too, because so much of human beings is social and being together in person. And uh, really just, I often say, of course, encouraging them to seek help from a professional, because a lot of times people think that they have to be uh, their family member's therapist or, you know, but I say encourage them to seek help. But also one of the best things you can do is just listen. And like you said, just sometimes getting it out, venting, talking about the hardships you're having and having someone really there to listen and say, yeah, this is tough. It's really hard. Gosh, it's so, oh, it's so needed. And it feels like such a weight lifted off. Yeah, it yeah, it was absolutely no, it was brutally necessary. There was no other way out of that than to be honest and say that. And I think, you know, you, you know, you've just nailed it in the head, Kelly, um, in a sense that there's been so many people who have been suffering, you know, from depression, anxiety and yeah. all those things. And, um, you know, I have my myself within that time was growing, uh, going crazy. That's why I really felt I needed to be honest with my husband. Yeah. And I think the, the, the hard thing sometimes is, you know, you can't, I'm, an, I'm naturally an optimistic person. I love being optimistic. I see, you know, the silver lining um, in the cloud. I, I really want to see the, 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 you know, the better side of any situation. But there are times where I just felt like, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be on the phone with a friend. And they're really going through such a hard time. And I wouldn't know, you know, how to motivate them um, yeah. to get out of that situation beyond what I know, which yeah. would either be the word of God or, yeah. you know, giving them advice from my side. And, um, you know, as a person of color, I must admit, mm -hmm. uh, going to, you know, finding help professionally is mm -hmm. not something that we, we are prone to be encouraged to do. And I remember when I lost my mom last year, I really, you know, I, 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 I knew, you know, I, I knew it was good for her to have gone. She was resting. She was at peace. And, but I just could not uh, reconcile myself with the fact, um, um, you, you know, at the time. And I, I struggled um, quite a lot with, with, with her loss. And I remember I went to go see someone and I spoke to my husband. And I said, I'm going to go see a therapist because I need help beyond what you can give me, you know, and I, and I, and I said that to her, I spoke with my sister and my sister said, no, go, you know, go get the, get the help. And that's what I say to people that mm -hmm. help comes in different ways. And sometimes it comes professionally and mm -hmm. we should open ourselves to that. And after I spoke to her, oh my goodness, she just spoke so much sense in so many things. She showed me, you know, I, the fact that I was very hard on myself, I should just you know, um, accept it's a part of grieving, etc. But it was, it was. She said it in such a way that landed so well with me that I accepted and took her advice. And I, oh, there's something also I'm um, special about getting advice from someone who's not your family member yeah. because they're not attached or they're not too close. Yeah. Um, you know, um, to you. So I, yeah, I completely recommend that people do see someone if they are mm. struggling. Right. And like you said, there is a lot of stigma. And sometimes, too, if people aren't comfortable seeing a professional therapist. Sometimes, like you'd mentioned, your spirituality, maybe it's a priest, a minister, or just someone, like you said, unbiased, who's not uh, related to you or who doesn't know the same people. Like you said, that different perspective where they don't know you, they don't know your family. It's like, ooh, okay, this is nice. 
Yeah, so true, so true. But I think the younger generation, my generation and the generation thereafter will not, you know, uh, because, you know, uh, they're more exposed, I would say, mm -hmm. I think it would be, it, it's going to be far better for them mm -hmm. and for us because um, we know it's not taboo to go ask for help anymore compared to, for instance, with my mom, um, mm -hmm. et cetera. So I'm, I'm very proud of myself for having taken that step um, mm -hmm. to finding help. <laughs> and thank you for sharing your story too, because I think the more that we talk about the benefits of, of help like that, and that's really what it is. People oftentimes think therapy is just laying on a couch and it's uncomfortable. Well, sometimes it is, but also it's really just talking and sharing your story and working out what's in your head. Uh, and it's so good after a session, you walk out and you just feel lighter and oh, it's, I try to encourage everyone to go. That's kind of my mission. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. That's that great. Fun. Yes. So um, just to give you a little, little bit of background about um, about me, mm -hmm. um, Kelly, I come from a very big family. Mm -hmm. and, and the, the big family. Um, and I remember growing up in the Eastern Cape, which is the southernmost part of Africa. It's in the tip of Africa, mm -hmm. in South Africa. Um, you know, it was it was not um, just a, you know, a, a question, Kelly, is that, not a question rather, but an answer to tell you a bit more about myself and the challenges that I've, I've had over the years um, is that, uh, you know, for instance, I'm I'm a chef by trade. In fact, I did uh, I did a degree. I have a degree in food and consumer sciences, where I majored in food science and nutrition. Mm. And one of the challenges being, um, you know, a a a, a person of color specifically, um, growing up wanting to be a chef. Yo, my mom was so upset that I wanted to choose that career, and that was one of the first challenges I had to encounter, um, having to you know choose a proper career that I felt fitted for me and she was upset because she really felt that I was you know I was a bright spot I should you know I, I should do law I should do you know any other thing that except for being in the kitchen why would you choose to be in and <laughs> to choose to go in the kitchen because it was you know she wanted to make sure that we were secure in terms of our education that spent a lot of money making sure that we are we are well educated and all of that mm -hmm. and it just didn't make sense for her and i remember how hard it was to um how hard it was to make that decision from a very young age you know to say to my parents please allow me to do what i love doing um it wasn't easy and guess what? They allowed me to do it. They thought it was going to be a gap year. I'm only going to do it for one year. Mm -hmm. And it was a four-year degree. One year, and she's going to come back and do LLB, which is law. And mm -hmm. I did it, and I was top in class. I got a bursary, and I thought, yay, I was very happy. Four years down the line, I finished my degree. And guess what? Once I finished, mm -hmm. I, was, I couldn't find a job. Oh. I could not find uh, work for a period of about nine months. Mm. And that was one of the most challenging times of my career and right at the beginning of it. Yeah. Um, you know, and that was, you know, me um, uh, mentally, that was really hard because it meant, you know, you, you know, when you, doubt, you, you, you now get into like serious doubt where mm. you, you doubt yourself and, and ask, did I even make the right decisions? Yep. Did I even make the right career choice you know my parents told me and now I'm not the person who likes being you know I told you so uh -huh. <laughs> you know it's not it's not something I like hearing when people uh, do tell me and um, that but I, I I didn't want my parents to tell me that and they were very gracious enough to say not to tell me they they told me not to do um food as a career so you know I think um, there's a beauty with um being mentally strong to a certain degree um Kelly because it's able to take to help you make the right decisions, even if they're just small decisions, instead of just taking that in and just, you know, giving, giving up for yeah. nine months. And because I was a, a, a top student, I, I, I met a lot of my um, uh, fellow um, um, students mm -hmm. um, at, at uni who were not, uh, if, if I can say, who, who, whom, whom I, for instance, was, I uh, got awards, etc. And they didn't. Mm -hmm. And it felt like, you know, when you meet them and it felt like, yeah, what was all that hard work for, you know, mm -hmm. because where has it landed you now? So there was a lot of self-doubt. There was a lot of you know, um, I, I, there's a lot of regret. I did regret at some point having taken this this course. It did cross my mind, mm -hmm. um, etc. 
But what I did do right, which I think was really helpful at the time, was the fact that I decided I'm going to stay in Cape Town because mm -hmm. Cape Town has far more opportunities than where I come from uh, in my hometown. Mm -hmm. And I knew if I keep, if I stay planted or in uh, stay in Cape Town, then I'll have better opportunities in finding in finding work. I accepted where I was, mm -hmm. and and I and I found another job in a boutique store, mm -hmm. um, in a boutique store, and I worked there for about nine months. And I, I just I just told myself that I'm not going to succumb to being a statistic in the country mm -hmm. of not being employed. Mm -hmm. And whether it is being a, a sales assistant in a boutique store or being uh, whatever, I'm just going to do it because I just need to. That really helped me because it was um, it was within that time that I also learned other skills beyond what you know I would I was trained in, mm -hmm. even though I didn't know that at the time. And then eventually I you know I got a job. I got hit hunted for um, for a specific job, which was great. So so yeah, it's you know my my I've, I've had a, a, a number of challenges in you know mentally where you 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 almost you self doubt if whether is it even. You know, uh, did I make the right decisions? And did, and those are the things. Sometimes I, 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 I often wonder. I've, I've achieved, uh, you know, a, 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 a big amount of success. Mm -hmm. I, I would, I would say that. Mm -hmm. And saying that in the most, uh, um, no, not in a bragging way at all. You, you know. So, but at the same time, I, I always wonder why is it, even though we have, and specifically as women. Even though we have achieved much, we have been validated, we've got awards, we've got this mm -hmm. and we've got that. But why is it that we still, you know, doubt ourselves? Mm -hmm. Why is it that when challenges come or when things come, we suddenly doubt? That's that's often what I experience in my journey as an entrepreneur, as mm -hmm. a as a as a you know, as a as a as a as a person who's really ambitious and wants big dreams. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, when I see certain situations, it's not all the time that I go, Yay, I'm going for it. There are times where I'll go, Yay, I'm going for it. And then I'm like, hang on, wait, mm -hmm. can I really? Like I, you know, those are the things I often wonder, like why? Like, mm -hmm. you know, why do we why do I specifically um mm -hmm. often feel like that, even though I have achieved so much. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I think there's not a person alive, especially women too. I hear that all the time. I feel that way too. You know, you get to this point and you feel like I should be happy, but sometimes it's, you feel like you said, like, do I deserve this? Did I make the right decision? Am I good enough? I think a lot of that comes with comparison too, like comparing ourselves to someone else. And that's really tough. I think a lot of people get stuck. Well, oh, I'm not as good as this person, or I don't make as much as this person, or, you know, that comparison trap. Uh, and that happens a lot on social media too. So I wonder, do you ever find yourself falling into comparing yourself to other people, especially on social media? And if so, what what do you do about it when you do feel low like that? I, yeah, I think so to a certain degree. I think the negativity of being a very ambitious person, mm -hmm. um, of wanting to always be on top, of wanting to always be the best, et cetera, mm -hmm. is that, is that, you look around and you think, how can I, how can I top that? Or you look around and how can I, um, you know, how can I bring the, how can I and my team be the best um, at this? Mm -hmm. And the sad part is that even though it is not necessarily that you're going around to compare, but it yeah. lends itself into comparison. Mm -hmm. So, um, so what I've been doing lately, which has really helped me, is that I've closed my eyes to competition. I'm not even yeah. looking what other people are doing. I'm just doing me. Uh -huh. And I just found that I'm so liberated. You know, I'm so mm -hmm. liberated with not, you know, checking on who's doing what, who's what are they doing at the moment, who's doing that. Because I found when I did that, I got a lot of distraction. So, mm -hmm. you know, I I, I I would change direction because it's like, oh my goodness, so I have to do this first or whatever. So mm -hmm. I would change direction on the things that I'm supposed to be doing mm -hmm. because I've seen another person doing that. Now, uh, you know, it, it just, it's for me, I saw it as a distraction. And I think I struggled with this a bit because, you know, I am a business and I do, um, I, I am a business and it's a competitive space. Clients, um, look at social media as, a, as, as, um, as, you know, um, as a, as a reference a majority of the time, not all the time in order, in, in order to know if whether are you a person whom we can work with, et cetera. So social media is important. Mm -hmm. Um, um, but at the same time, I think what has helped is that I, I need to do me. Mm -hmm. And once, once I started doing me, 
I actually realized that, you know, I'm getting far more results than having to look at what everybody else is doing around at this time. Um, they're not. And I think the struggle was from a business perspective is that, you know, you don't want to be, you know, you know how Apple came when, uh, when, um, when Apple came into the market way back and, you know, there was Nokia and there was no, no, uh, you know, Samsung, not Samsung, what was it? Um, Ericsson and many other older brands. Mm -hmm. When they came in the market, they were never ready with what, um, with what um, Apple was going to bring. And I remember the CEO of um, Nokia, when he spoke the one time, you know, being very teary, he said, it's not that we didn't do anything right. Mm -hmm. it, it, we did everything right. Mm -hmm. My team worked so hard, but we were never we were never ready for the competition. The competition was just too strong. And when I heard that, and when I heard the state he was in at the time, I thought, oh, I need to look at competition. Uh -huh. You know, I need to look what the competition is doing. But I, but I soon realized that you know it's good to look at what are the trends, what is going on, etc. But not to necessarily compete. Yeah. You know, as in shift my focus to what the competition is doing. Um, in that sense, but know what's going on, but let it not affect my goals and my mm -hmm. and what we had wanted to do. Still, you know, sticking in my own lane. Still yeah. sticking in in the things that we had planned to have, to do this year. Mm -hmm. Um. So so that's how I handled it from a business perspective because I also don't want to you know let go too much to a point where it's like you, you you're not um you, you're not progressive or you're not you're not mm -hmm. seeing what's happening around around you. I want to know what's happening around me, but I don't want to compete m m myself with the next person because yeah. I know what I have to offer is com is completely different from them and what necessarily works for them might not necessarily be the magic maker for me so that has helped me quite a lot yes i love that and really the only competition should be yourself and who you were yesterday so i love like you said stay in your lane focus on your goals keep an eye on what other people are doing to maybe motivate you or to inspire you but really just stay focused on yourself uh, and I've noticed your social media is very positive. I love, like you said, I love social media too. You can meet great people, you can reach people. Uh, and I love your kids on there. It's such a fun way oh, to just you. share your life. And I noticed you had a post recently too, where you talked about a really dark time in your life, I believe back in 2016. And you said it really put you in a bad headspace for many, many months. And then you shared that you got to go uh, paragliding and it really was a, tr a transformative experience for you and you said it really just uh kind of helped you get out of that uh so can you talk about that a little bit and how facing your fear helped you with your your mental health all right um 2016 was i you know was one of my i consider it one of my worst years even though there were good things that happened in 2016 but you know the the, the biggest i remember is that uh, i'm uh, incident where it happened i had trusted people with you know business mm -hmm. and things just went sour i got swindled mm -hmm. lots of money it was just it was just terrible i had already i had um i had invested in a project that i knew would take off and mm -hmm. and in a way that incident even tapped onto that you know the the, the success of mm -hmm. that project mm -hmm. uh, not necessarily its success but rather, rather its legs to grow so mm -hmm. it it almost like uh, crippled um, the project from growing as fast as it ne it needed to financially and otherwise. And from a Christian perspective, I remember one of my my things was, but Lord, you know, I'm such a I'm a good person. It's like why would why would this happen to me? Because I you know I, it's not like this karma coming back at me because I I'm not a person who would just offend people or do anything yeah. uh, bad to people in general. So I really struggled with that. I really mm -hmm. and I think what was hard was 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 because I had given my all to this job. In fact, I liken it to um I liken the situation to having um you know carried you know planning it, having a baby for two mm -hmm. years mm -hmm. and then you and your husband decide all right we're now gonna have this uh -huh. child and then you go for it and guess what you conceive uh -huh. and now you nurture the child you know nine months in labor mm -hmm. make sure that you eat healthy mm -hmm. you're walking you're doing your due due, due diligence mm -hmm. on you know on on your side to make sure that this baby is healthy mm -hmm. and going to for checkups etc doing everything giving it all all you've got and then you give birth to your, you know, your, your midwife uh, gives birth to you. And then suddenly, right at that moment, the midwife says, 
thank you for the child bye you know it's almost like yeah. you can't do anything i can't mm -hmm. run i can't mm -hmm. walk i can't i can't do anything because mm -hmm. I, i it's just that that's what i like in it because mm -hmm. that project was we planned it for two years mm -hmm. i had given and uh, i had given it to these partners and funny enough i was i just i was giving but i get given handed over to them because i was given birth to my child oh. third child uh, mm -hmm. at the time uh you know and um and it just it left me i was destroyed mm -hmm. i was mm -hmm. i was completely and utterly broken i was I was broken, you know, it is only about a year ago where I can talk about the incident and not shed a tear. And I think I'm really proud of myself to be able to be in the space because it means I I have healed. Mm -hmm. Um but there was a time where I would talk about it and share the experience but there'll always be tears flowing because it was mm -hmm. it was really brutal um um what happened. And then I decided that okay, fine. So obviously prayed about it. Prayed about it. And then I remember the the, the advice I got was um uh you know a uh, fish on the other side you know uh, put your net on the other side i was like no i want this one don't uh -huh. don't no, no i argued uh -huh. i i you know like i don't want to put my net on the other side meaning i'm saying don't pay attention to it just move on mm -hmm. and it's like no i want to mm -hmm. fight this this is unfair this is unjust you know the, the warrior in me who wants to Yeah. <laughs> wanted to fight but it wasn't good for me and it was that fighting that then really like that wanting to fight that really drove me into depression because i felt there's no justice in the world mm -hmm. and also because we had been you know i i had given my all to that business um and invested my all in it it i almost didn't have the muscle to fight it legally you know i didn't have the financial muscle i would ordinarily have to mm -hmm. fight it legally should i not have invested as much as i had so i just felt like there's no justice etc and i remember i went into depression mm -hmm. and just and, and i was just i was just mm -hmm. now you know days where you you'd sleep for three days you don't want to brush your teeth and mm -hmm. everybody who speaks with me it was just me and my baby and if brian my husband mm -hmm. uh would come to me and say hey siba he's just checking on me like, wow. <laughs> bite his yeah. head off which was yeah. not fair because he was he have, was just as hurt as I was um, at the time but that was the state I was in and it was really terrible and I remember um and and the thing is the person was quite was is a prominent person um in the country in South Africa specifically so every time I would see him or read about him it would just like I, I would let's say I'd go for three months and I think okay I'm fine and then three months later I would see him and then it would just start over again and I'll be sick mm -hmm. and it just like it it would it, it a depression had started to manifest to sickness like a shake and 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 be physically sick not yeah. just yeah. mentally sick but physically mm -hmm. sick and i just you know my tummy would run it just it was yeah. not a, a nice period at all um so anyway uh what i decided to do um within that year so i you know did that year you know what was the worst uh, or not worst but funny thing kelly is that you know it, it it my book which i had self published which was the the one i was swindled money from um at the time won so many awards yeah. so here i am you know fighting this behind the scenes yeah. i couldn't tell people at the time i wasn't ready to share it with the world mm -hmm. and you know people are applauding me saying well done siva such a great entrepreneur she self self published the book with no help of a publisher and now it's doing you know it won at uh, the guman awards it won another award etc mm -hmm. so people are applauding me but they don't know what is but i think that was even worse because you mm -hmm. know it's it's like i could not even enjoy the glory of all that hard work mm -hmm. so what i did was in january 2017 i decided enough is enough mm -hmm. i'm not going to you know i had prayed i had done everything i had spoken to people i had you know i had spoken to people i had spoken to no no everybody i knew had my back so i decided that i'm just going to go in i'm going to i'm going to do something completely drastic because i felt like it, it it you know what had happened had not just paralyzed me from from uh, from you know uh, from the book perspective but also my mind mm -hmm. like every time somebody came um kelly yeah. i yeah. had doubts for days you'd have to, i had a checklist like yeah. this long you know in mm -hmm. order to know i i what are your intentions what do they want you know i was paranoid i was mm -hmm. completely paranoid and then what i did was i then decided that you know i don't want to live like this I'm not a mistrusting person 
gen generally. And I'm not a person who is not a risk taker. I'm a risk taker. I'm a I'm a free soul. You know, I see an opportunity, I run for it. You know, I am ambitious and so on. And this was this had crippled me. Mm -hmm. crippled me it, it had just crippled me my thinking my you know my my everything so I thought I need to do something drastic I need to look fear in the eye and mm -hmm. say to it you no, it will no longer have a grip on me and I'm going I'm going to work on this mm -hmm. and I decided to do paragliding uh, wow. because I felt paralyzed uh -huh. <laughs> And yeah. I needed the uh, not complete opposite, but you know the opposite of that. And I needed to also face a fear of mine, yeah. um, which is um, being you know a fear of heights. Uh -huh. And I thought, let me do this, and let let me do this, and 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 I did it. And I remember how you know how that experience just you know I I I, I made a prayer before that, and I just prayed and I started declaring, praying, and just mm -hmm. making declarations that things are not going to carry on as they used to anymore. You know, I started making positive proclamations about my life that day and going forward and i did it i remember when i was guided now i was um you know i had worn the entire year and i was about to go i was not even nervous you know wow. because i i really wanted to do it it was amazing wow. the best experience ever i'm gonna go back and do it again oh, when yeah. we back to normality yeah. um so i needed to do that in order to do something physical to face fear and it helped me quite a lot. I love that. I'm right with you. I'm, I'm so afraid of heights. I don't know if I could ever do it, but I love that you did that. That's amazing. And, and you must have felt so empowered after doing that. And like you said, you looked fear right in the face, dove off the mountain and just took it on. I love that. I think that's amazing. Yes, no, I did. And it was, it was, um, it was very liberating. That's the word. It was very liberating. And it was, you know, I said to my husband, I need to do it beginning of the year. It can't be February, can't be whatever, because I don't want to lose yet another day yeah. to fear. And it's, yeah, it was, yes, it was one of the best experiences, actually. I love it. I love that story. Oh, my gosh. Well, I'll have to watch out for your video when you do it again. And <laughs> that's so cool. <laughs> Um, now, switching gears a little bit, uh, there is such a big link between what you eat, how you feel, your mental health, how confident you feel, how good you feel in your body. Uh, so how do you, well, do you eat super healthy and how do you kind of, how do you balance eating really great foods, indulging, and also being mindful of health and nutrition as well? All right. I am, um... I'm a person who generally believes in moderation. Mm -hmm. I believe that, you know, I believe in balance. I believe in, I don't believe in um, excluding certain foods from my diet. If mm -hmm. I'm, if I want to lose weight, I believe I need to eat food from all the food groups, mm -hmm. uh, but it is in moderation. I, I, I also don't believe in overeating. Um, you know, I, I believe in portion control mm -hmm. um, for my for my body type. So those are the key things that have really worked for me. Mm -hmm. And then also the choices, the food choices I make, you know, yeah. because you can have a you can have um, um, a, a, a protein um, that is a red meat with a big chunk of fat in it. Or you can have a lean, um, a leaner type type of, of protein so i really believe in good food choices um mm -hmm. whether it would be for and let me make like small examples mm -hmm. for instance for myself and my family for snacking so for snacking i'll make sure that in my house we have lots of fruits and vegetables that's how i grew up we grew mm -hmm. up with trees in our backyard uh garden in our backyard and you know fruits and veg was part of what we um what we ate growing up and if, as much as now i do have a small garden well bigger garden but i only have i only tend a small portion of the garden not all of it mm -hmm. uh i still buy uh fruit fruit and vegetables um but even there i make sure that my kids have options for days when it comes to that blueberries uh pineapple literally all they they eat everything which is really nice the boys are fussy oh boys are very fussy mm -hmm. um and then uh in terms of snacks i'll make sure that they'll still have snacks but it will be perhaps an air popped snack no sugar yeah. Uh, so I, they'll still indulge in, you know, in, 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 in beautiful, you know, not beautiful per se, but in food that is not necessarily classified as healthy. 
but it will be a healthier option because mm -hmm. I also don't want health to be a punishment to my kids yeah. because what then what then happens there is that if they feel like it's a punishment, the day they leave my house, they mm -hmm. will then, <laughs> uh, yeah. you know, uh, overindulge and mm -hmm. then, you know, um, um, have a, a food habits that are not good. Yeah. I, I make sure that the, the choices in the house are great for mm -hmm. myself and for my family. Mm -hmm. When it comes to um, um, sweets, sugary stuff, et cetera, I do allow my kids to have a little bit of you know, sugar here and there, mm -hmm. but in, um, in moderation. Because yeah. I found with my firstborn, what I did, which was an advice that was going around at the time, mm -hmm. no sweets until two years, and I did that. And wow. the day he had sweets, I was very unlucky, sadly, that he was the one who, just, who then just got obsessed. So wow. after two years of no sweets, uh -huh. he just got obsessed with sweets. So I thought, let me do it in moderation um, mm -hmm. for, you know, with, my, with my other kids. So, for instance, I'll have sweets um, packed somewhere, but it won't be such a thing because I don't make a thing about it, about mm -hmm. sweets, um, which is great. And what else? I'll make sure that they they snack on nuts, on seeds. Um, I would blend, uh, for instance, if I'm making smoothies for them, I also blend some uh, nut um, seeds on the on the smoothies in order to to um, to uh, increase the, the 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 nutritional intake of the food. So there's lots of little things that I do that then um, help my family yeah. stay stay um, healthy by specifically food choices. Right. Yeah. And that's why I, I always love baby steps. Sometimes I hear clients say, I either don't have the money or the time, or I'm a terrible cook. So what would you say is a good baby step for someone who really wants to start eating healthier, but maybe has limitations? You know, it's to a certain degree, it is true that, you know, if you do want to um, eat healthy, you know, it, it does tend to be more expensive, mm -hmm. especially if you're not going to grow your own vegetables, because, you know, if you think of blueberries and apples or blueberries and chips, mm -hmm. definitely blueberries are going to be more expensive. So yeah. it, it, uh, a healthy diet, unfortunately, does lend itself into becoming more expensive than a, mm -hmm. than a diet that majority, m m many people take. Yeah. Um, but what I what I say is you take it step by step. You don't suddenly because you, you want to sustain your diet mm -hmm. and you want to make sure that, you know, in three months time, you'll still be enjoying eating this food. And mm -hmm. in six months time, you'll still be enjoying, you know, the diet in which you're in. So what mm -hmm. I do is I then say to people, um, you know, uh, take it bit by bit. For instance, if you're a person who's really big on cola, mm -hmm. um, on soda drinks, yeah. um, then what you then do the next time is how about putting in a little bit of sparkling water, a quarter sparkling water to your cup, because what, what you're doing in, in essence is that you are letting your sensory, uh, um, your, 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 your tank to be more accustomed to a less sugar, but not necessarily at a shock level. Mm -hmm. So you, you you reduce it a little by little by little by little by little. Same thing I advise parents when it comes to fruit juices, sodas, etc., mm -hmm. and even other snacks. So the first thing you do is if they only want a snack on sweets, mm -hmm. then um, you know, just then add one or two healthy options and then talk, you know, positively about those options and how it's good for them and all of that. Um, and, and then if, if they don't like it, because often kids will say, oh, I don't like it. They don't want it. Uh, this is yucky. You know, continue, continue with it and let them see you eat it. Uh -huh. Let the, let the kids see you eat it. My, 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 do my, my daughter specifically, my third born, uh, she's four. She chows on veggies. She, she eats wow. seaweed, she eats uh -huh. literally everything. She's such a good influence uh -huh. for my boys who are older than her, um, simply because she just enjoys eating it. And because we eat it together, they feel that like they're left out, they have FOMO. Um, so sometimes I'll see them, you know, and now they enjoy seaweed, the dried um, seaweed. They enjoy sushi, which they never used to enjoy before. They enjoy many other stuff because we have a good influencer in uh, in the house. So when they see me eating it, um, I then, uh, and, uh, us see, uh, eating it, they, they then also try it. So, you know, and also as a mom, to be honest, I'm not, I'm not ashamed to juice things into and, and, and add them into their drinks and add them into their pasta sauces and add them into many other stuff because 
if they won't eat it, I have to get it done somehow, you know, and <laughs> we do what, what we have to. But I would say it is, you know, your 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 choices. Make good uh, food choices because that we can control. Mm -hmm. um, instead of buying um, instead of buying um, chips, how about buying a pack of nuts? And also, mm -hmm. it's sometimes it's not that people um, uh, sometimes I find it's not all the time I find that so that people can't um, um, they, they 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 can't afford it, but it's such that they don't have the desire to buy those things. Yep. So so that's that it's the will and it's the desire to do so. When it comes to weight loss specifically, I have found that the battle is more in the kitchen and what we put in than it is with exercising and all of that. If we can control what we eat, it will make you know your weight loss loss journey or weight maintenance journey a lot easier when you have to exercise and and, and do all of that. Yeah. Yeah. So basically kind of like you said, baby steps, gradually substituting some healthier options. And like you said, you want to make sure that it's something you can live with long term, because I think that's why a lot of diets fails because you'll be really into it, but it's not a lifestyle change. It's not something you could do for any length of time. So great ideas. I know I'll have to work on that. I have a couple sugar addicts myself. So I'm going to start <laughs> and more smoothies and do some of the veggies in the pasta sauce. And like I said, it's simple swaps like that, that can be a good, a good start to this. Um, well, I don't want to keep you much longer, but I do have one kind of final question for you. Uh, what is the best life advice or mantra that someone's given you that you really live by? All right. I this one was given to me um by my dad. Uh my dad, I remember my father uh, many years ago when I left um you know I left home to go to university. Um they set me down to give me all the do's and don'ts and and uh, etc. And um I remember Excuse me. And one of the things that Dada, that we call them, call my dad Dada, mm -hmm. um, told me was that, you know, um, you must work hard. You know, don't be afraid to work. Don't be afraid, you know, to do the things that other people aren't, I, aren't willing to do because it's that that's going to set you um, apart from them. So do the work, do mm -hmm. it and give it your best. And then he said to me, and you know what, my daughter, um, not only that, but you must, uh, you must work hard that your work is not just approved by men, but also is approved by God, you mm -hmm. know, because he said, do your best, do your part, mm -hmm. and then God will do the rest. That has mm -hmm. been my mantra. So I do my best. And by that, I mean, you know, if we've got a deadline, if we've got whatever, we, my team and I will do it until, you know, we'd rather not sleep until it's done. You mm -hmm. know, we, we'd rather be diligent and do the job until it is done. We rest um, thereafter. And then, um, and then, uh, then he, then he would say, you know, and then you allow God to do the rest. By that he means your work will speak for itself. Mm -hmm. It will it will create opportunities beyond, you know, beyond it will speak for itself um uh, uh when we are sleeping, when when I'm sleeping and when I'm not even thinking of working or thinking of another opportunity, because we did such great a uh, great job kelly will see me and like oh i want to work with siva because she has done this and this and you know then you know he will then you know god is able to put you with the right people at the time in which you need need to but you need to be you you know do the due diligence on your part to 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 grind <laughs> yeah. you know uh, put your sleeves up <laughs> and just go in you know and do the work so you know that's been that's been my my mantra for the longest time there, mm -hmm. there are many others that I've, I've heard along the way but the one that really stuck with me was that do your best Siba in everything that do and mm -hmm. don't work you know so that people can uh, uh, praise you but I work knowing that you know you, you know I my, my work is being seen from above and mm -hmm. heaven is happy and that that makes me happy so oh, okay. that makes me happy and I've had so many opportunities that have been opened to me that I could have never thought would be open. I'm going to very quickly tell you a very short one, Kelly. Yeah. When I had um when I when I had the show um um Siba's Table, which is in over 135 countries, you mentioned it earlier on, it's in every continent. 
I was busy in the office as a food editor of a prominent magazine in the country and enjoying it. But the deadlines were terrible. It was a weekly magazine. It was, you know, we would work until quite late uh, and all of that. Uh -huh. And I remember I never applied for that position. Never. I didn't apply for it. Um, it, you know, the, the company I was working for, we had done a, a local show called Cooking with Siba that mm -hmm. won an award. They decided they're going to syndicate it to Europe. Mm -hmm. And it was then that Food Network UK saw me and they were hopeful that I'll be South African because they needed a South African anchor. They were not even looking for a female anchor. <laughs> they're looking for a male anchor. Wow. And they flipped through channels. And there I was, you know, mm -hmm. and they called me right there and then. It was after hours. They called me right there and then. I thought, no way. Like, I thought it was a prank. I thought, mm -hmm. no, you're calling me for, from the UK and you're calling me for, a, you're saying you want me from Food Network? No way, you know. They came down all the way from London. They came down. They interviewed me. I got the job. Now, they had interviewed 450 people. They'd come in the country, interviewed 450 people and I was not even part of the list. I didn't even know Food Network was down, down here interviewing people. So I never even applied for the position. But, you know, through through my work and through what I believe in, that God opens doors that no man can shut. Um, you know, I was they were flipping through channels and they saw me and my work, my work spoke for myself at that period that they had to come down to Africa to have this interview with me. Eight years later, I'm the anchor of the channel in Africa. Um, really, it's yeah. So that's my that's my mm -hmm. biggest mantra. Do oh. your best. And allow God to do the rest. I love it. And like you said, look out, look at your success now. And sometimes you don't even expect it. And that's even better. I think it's just such a blessing and and continued blessings to you and your family and your career. Uh, now, if people want to find you, where can they locate you on social media? Where can they buy your book? Where can they find your TV show? Tell us about that. All right, awesome. So the my uh, my cooking show, See This Table, is um it is in Australia. It is in and it used to be in the US on the cooking channel. Um and then on in South Africa it's on DSTV and in Africa. It's also in the Middle East. And they're all in Food Network. If not Food Network, it's the cooking channel. Uh and also in Asia. So they can find me there. So go to your cooking network and search for Siba, S-I-B-A, and, um, and, and find me there. But in terms of social media, you can find me at SibaMtongana.com. So Siba, S-I-B-A, M-T-O-N-G-A-N. And kudos to you, um, Kelly, you said my surname perfectly. <laughs> something that came across, right? So I'm glad. Oh, yay. Great. Well, thank you again so much for your time. I could have talked to you about so much more, but I've kept you way too long. So thank you so much for, for again, taking the time to chat with us about everything. And uh, I can't wait to to keep watching you and watching you grow. And I'm so glad I got to meet you. Oh, thank you so much. Likewise, sending you lots of love. Mwah. Thank you.